If you're below the age of 25, you need to take advantage of the time you have to build good habits. Have you ever heard the phrase, people never change? This is actually partly true. Typically, you'll see older people as young as 25 really never change their ways for the rest of their life. And this is because it's harder for them to do so, like you and me. I'm 18 for reference. This is because your brain is always forming new pathways and circuits until this age. So your brain is very malleable to everything you do. If you do good habits like going to the gym, meditate, doing deep work, etc. These habits are more likely to stick with you even to adulthood. Unfortunately, if you do bad habits like corn, video games, vaping, any sort of smoking, alcohol, or anything like that, these habits are also likely to stick with you because your brain is very malleable. So if you wanna be on self-improvement and live a good life and delay gratification, it is imperative that you choose these good habits. And don't worry, if you're over the age of 25, there's still a chance for you to rewire your brain and you can still build good habits, but it will be harder for you to do for someone like me. So what's crazy is that this neuroplasticity thing is actually really true. When I was around the age of really nine years old, actually I, st I started playing video games when I was about seven years old. My dad had an iPad that I used to play little tiny like, you know, app store games on there. And it was pretty fun. I, I really enjoyed playing them. They were very addicted. I played games like Clash of Clans and whatnot. And I, I really played these games a lot. And my dad, he tried to prevent me from playing these, but I always found a way around them. This turned out to be a really like unhealthy habit. And it's very common for people all around my age group, around 18 or younger or, or slightly older, is the, the problem of technology. But this applies to any bad habit. I'm just using this as an example. So I, I kept playing technology and video games and everything like that. And I got super addicted to them, not only because technology and social media and video games itself are addicting, but because my brain is neuro neuroplastic. I think that's the right word. And this, this is probably most likely the same case for you. You maybe have gone through something similar to this. Your brain is so neuroplastic that your, your brain, the actual chemistry of your brain changes so that your, your brain becomes accustomed to that activity, that habit. So the more times you do a repetition or a thing, your brain will be more inclined to doing that thing. So I would always go on my dad's phone and then Xbox later and then PC. My brain became accustomed to doing this thing because of neuroplasticity and also because they are addicting. But th that, that's the second topic. And this, this applies for anything as well. Like for me, I, I, I went to the gym. I started going to the gym. Like I, I've kind of been going since I was a little kid. Uh, I would I would work out uh, right beside my dad and when I was like three years old and that that was fun I kind of got that example from my dad of of working out but I kind of I kind of carried that through through my, my my childhood I was a very athletic kid and active kid I played rugby and other sports like that and football and I was always I was always into sports and I, I really enjoyed them and what helped is that my brain was so neuroplastic that I, I kept the habit of playing them and working out, that now I'm literally going to play D1 in college because I developed the habits of becoming good. Sure, I, I had the I had the natural ability of athletics, but I also put in the work and I developed a good habit where I could just work on my sport and getting stronger and bigger in the gym. Another habit that I kept doing, just for example, is like posting on social media. I used to post, or I do post on TikTok, and I used to post books, max, and content. I already made a video about that, but I stopped doing that. And I made it a habit for myself to post a video every day. This is about last summer and kind of during the fall a little bit, and I posted every day. And I, I gained a decent amount of followers. Not, not really nearly a ton, but a couple of thousand, a, a decent amount. And that was a good experience for me because my brain was so neuroplastic that I developed a habit to keep doing every, every single day and condition my brain to do that and to want to do that. So if you're 25 years and older, don't worry, you can still build your habits, but it might take longer for you to do so. The general science says it takes about 21 days to build a habit. So if you keep doing something every day, 
you're more than likely to build a habit eventually, even if you're over the age of 25, but especially if you're below that age. So I'm sure my, my target viewing audience is most likely under the age of 25. So bro, you, you should be good. I just wanted to, I just wanted to make that point. I'll get into some actionable steps that you can start to take to promote good habits and to take away bad habits from your life. But I just, I really wanted to emphasize that you really should be staying away from these bad habits, especially, especially if you're un under the age of 25, because they can be detrimental to your brain's development and your success as a person in the future. It's, you really don't want to risk it, bro. You might not have been thinking about that while you made decisions in the past, but I just want you to keep that in mind for the time being. So some actionable steps that you can start to take that I actually started doing was build a habit tracker. And this has been super impactful for me as a person to just have a checklist to complete all my habits throughout the day, making sure I keep track of them and keep myself accountable to do these habits, especially taking advantage of my neuroplastic brain and your neuroplastic brain. You need to give yourself a habit tracker so you keep yourself accountable to do these good habits that you should be doing. So for example, I have my habit tracker set to a cold shower in the morning, make my bed, get some sort of exercise done, meditate, pray. Yours doesn't have to be as extensive as mine. That's just some general advice of what yours should look like. And they're honestly super good to make. I made mine on Notion. It was just this thing. I watched a YouTube video of how to make it. But you could just do this on a piece of paper and put it up on your wall. You can just write the week and each habit and just check it off for each day. And that'll hold you accountable and it'll improve your life. And it'll make you like a happier person. And it gives you like a sense of accomplishment every time you can complete an activity. You know, sometimes you're not going to be able to complete every activity every day. And you know what? That's okay because you're getting better every single day. And if you weren't to make that habit tracker, you probably wouldn't be getting anywhere even close to how many habits you had. So you're, you're making an incremental change and this could be, this could be a drastic change over time. So it's really something you should think about. And I think every young man, really, really honestly, anybody should have a habit tracker if they want to improve their life and really get to the next level. And I already kind of touched upon this earlier, but you really want to stay away from the habits that will really affect your brain, like corn, video games, smoking, alcohol, and all these things. Because these negatively affect your brain chemistry, as I mentioned earlier, and you, you don't want to be messing with these because in and in of itself, video games aren't bad, or, but, the, but the other stuff really is bad. You don't want to be doing that stuff. There's so many negative effects to all those things. Like I know alcohol and, and some smoking, some substances will make your sleep worse and watching corn will make you socially anxious and you might get some sort of dysfunction, but you wanna be avoiding these bad habits so you don't do them like now, but also later in the future. So delay your gratification. If you, if you don't know what delaying gratification is, basically it's doing habits that are hard now that will pay off later. And what instant gratification is, is giving into easy things right now that will hurt you in the long run. So it's kind of it's kind of a trade-off. Do you want to have a comfortable present right now or do you want to have 10 times that in the future? It's it's really up to you. You you could even 100 times that if you really put in good work, but it's all about the habits that you build right now as a kid that serve as a foundation for the rest of your life. That's the most important advice that I could give any person our age is to you you always hear the term invest in yourself. It sounds kind of cliche, but it could not be closer to the truth. It is the most important thing that you can do for yourself. What do you think that parents are for? Parents are supposed to inform their kids, help them build their formation while they are neurally plastic. Literally, this there's a reason that there is like scientific evidence behind this of neuroplasticity. There had to been someone behind this to intentionalize how kids were more influenced while they were younger than when they're older. Because if you take advantage of that, you're gonna become a better person in the long run, and that will compound and compound and compound, like compounding interest. I just said compound a ton of times. But I hope that makes sense to you, bro. I, I really believe in you, and I think that this advice could actually really, really change some lives. I know it's really helped me. So I hope you can use that as some food for thought. And I'd love to see what your opinions are on that down in the comments. Anyways, take care, bro. Peace.